Welcome back to another episode of SR Now Fighting with the Phillies. I am your host, Mato. Um, if I don't sound that enthusiastic, it's because I'm not. But nonetheless, let me get through the show. This episode has been brought to you by Avalo Coffee. Avalo Coffee promises to offer the premium, premium coffee experience. Um, go to avalocoffee.com and use the promo code Phillies and get 10% off your entire coffee order. That is exclusive to my SR Now Fighting with the Phillies listeners. Um, so make sure you take care of our sponsors. Again, avalocoffee.com. I'll put everything, the correct spelling and everything in the description. Don't worry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, not a lot of transaction news. Uh, Jojo Marrero has been upgraded to, to the 60-day IL. And uh, Scott Kingery is um, on a 7-day IL with a concussion. Um, not much else to, uh, to, elab- to talk about there. Um, but I wanted to do something uh, unique. I wanted to rail off um, the Phillies hitters. A lot of Phillies hitters throughout the season. I want to I tell you their strikeout percentage. All right. Let's start from the... Um, uh, let's, let's start start from the let's start from the bottom. Okay, Gene Segura strikeout percentage is fifteen percent. Adam Hazy strikeout percentage you haven't seen in a while nineteen percent. Matt Joyce who's on the IL strikeout percentage is at twenty percent. Adubo Herrera twenty two percent. D D Gregory is twenty two percent. Adam Baum thirty percent. Real Muto thirty percent. Andrew McCutcheon thirty one percent. Bryce Harper thirty one percent. Reese Hawkins thirty one percent. Nick Maton thirty two percent. Um, uh, Roman Quinn. 36%. Um, um, Miller, uh, 36%. Brad Miller, 36%. Ronald Torres, 40%. Uh, Martian, 40%. Andrew Knapp, 44%. Mickey Moniak, 48%. Scott Kingery, 63%. Uh, that is all. That is the strikeout percentage of all of the Phillies hitters, all eligible Phillies hitters so far this season. And um, it's just madness. It's just madness. They can't hit their way out of a wet paper bag right now. It is ridiculous. Um, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it, that, you know, they just can't get up and, and play whenever they want. It's 162 games, I understand that. They can get hot and win 7 out of 10 and, and be the division lead. But these are the moments to get some early wins, to take advantage of some opportunities, because the Mets are a fluke. The Braves, are, the Braves aren't that good right now. At least they're not playing that good. But the Mets are leading the division, and I personally believe that they are a fluke. I do not believe in the Marlins or the Nationals at all. So this is the time for the Phillies to go get a get a division lead, stack up some wins, you know, and really jump out in front of this division. But no, 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 no. The Phillies don't want to do that. The Phillies don't. They don't look at that as this is an opportunity to jump out in front of the division. Yes, the Phillies have had injury problems. Yes, the bullpen has has has, has shown some flashes of some inconsistency, but there have been some moments where the bullpen has been legit. Um, I don't know when the Phillies are going to wait to address this, but. The Phillies may need to obtain one to two more starters. I keep bringing up Cole Hamels. I understand he's 37 years old, but what what you're getting from your Chase Anderson, your Matt Moore's, Vance Velasquez, I think you can get more out of Cole Hamels. Cole Hamels is a lefty. He's a Philadelphia native. He's clearly going to be on the Philadelphia Wall of Fame one day, obviously, for obvious reason. Um, you get the sentimental value with Cole Hamels. He's one of our guys. We drafted him here. He's one of our guys. And you get a quality left-handed pitcher. I don't know what, what the what the front office is doing. I don't know if they, they still think it's too early. I, I, do, I understand that it is May. But in two weeks, it's going to be June. So, you know, I don't know what they're waiting for. I think we know what we got in Matt Moore at this point. We know what we have in Chase Anderson at this point. Um, right now, Nola isn't, isn't pitching that good. Zach Wheeler has been the best pitcher on the team by far. It's not even close. Eflin's been giving you six innings. He's been solid. Outside of that, your starting pitching has been fluky. You see the last game with the Marlins, it was a bullpen game. It was a disaster. And the pitching wasn't even that bad. You gave up six runs, um, but a lot of that was defense. A lot of a couple of those runs could be charged to Alec Baum on, at third base. It was That was some, I will not say routine plays, but that was some plays he could have made. Or he could have at least kept it from being a double or a triple. You know, I, I can't sit back and blame the pitching. That bullpen game, the bullpen game wasn't really that bad of pitching. Uh, uh, the defense wasn't really that good uh, for the Phillies, and that that's what bit them in the butt. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't have much good to say about the Phillies right now. The guys that we expect to hit are in the slump right now, um, you know, and I don't expect that to last. Uh, Alec Baum is the one I think I, Harper's going to hit. 
Uh, Reese is going to hit. Reese is going to hit his for power. Um, I think Cutch Cutch actually he's get Cutch is going to keep continue to get on base in my opinion. He's going to keep it on base. This is looking at his, his average is average, but I think he's going to continue to get on base. He's going to hit. Segura's going to hit. I'm not worried about those guys so much. But Bohm is the guy I'm worried about. He doesn't have a history enough history to say that he's going to actually break out of this slump that he's in. You know, so it is what it is. I've seen some 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 resemblance of um, Bohm breaking out of the slump. Now, if if all those line up, if Segura's, if Andrew McCutcheon's getting on base, Harper's hitting, Reese is hitting for power. Uh, um, Segura's hitting. Aduba Herrera is probably the hottest hitter on the team right now. If he's hitting, all those guys lined up, and you have Alec Baum in the back end of that lineup hitting, you know, hitting the way he, the way we believe he can hit. This would be probably the best, probably one of the top three offenses in the National League. And I don't say that exaggeratingly. I think that could be a top three offense in the, in the National League. The only, to me, the only positive is the only upside to me is I like Nick Maton. I like that Joe Girardi's getting him some at-bats. Um, right now, we're going to need him at short and probably a second to give some rest to Gene Segura with Didi Gregorius on the uh, IL. But I like Nick Maton. I like him. I like him a lot. Um, in fact, if the, if the Phillies actually were evaluating their talent properly, Nick, Nick, we would have started the season with Nick Maton instead of going bringing Didi Gregorius back. But it is what it is. They need another pitcher. Um, the offense is clearly, clearly, clearly rattling right now. Um, they got, we got Boston coming to town. I think we got to go to Florida to play Tampa in the, in, in the Marlins. So, you know, one you can't look ahead at this point. We got to we got to take take care of Boston while, while they're going to be in Philly. Um, so it is what it is. It is what it is. That's the show. I'm over and I'm out of here, man. Thank you guys for listening. Please make sure you rate, subscribe, and review on whatever platform you listen to the show on. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. I am over and I am out of here. See you guys next week, hopefully with two serious wins under our belt.